everybody, Preston Poulter here with Pocket Jacks Comics, and it's Robotech time again! Yay! It's my favorite time. I love that show again. I know I, I gushed about it, but before we get there, I had an update. I had a really fun experience at WonderCon, um, which is at Anaheim. For those of you who don't know, uh, WonderCon is run by the same company that runs San Diego Comic Con. And, you know, I got my pro badge because I make comic books and I take my daughter to San Diego Comic Con. She loves it. And so they were offering me, hey, you want, you know, you want to go to WonderCon? I'm like, well, pro badge, why not? So uh, I went. This was my first time. I didn't really, you know, think much of it, but I had a blast. My daughter loves cosplaying. She played as this, uh, a character from an anime, Danganronpa. And <laughs> she, she loves this character, Sans, from a video game. And she proposed... Uh, marriage a couple of times. That was fun. I think she freaked out a 12 year old. But while I was there, I connected with uh, Dexter Odana. I don't know. I'll just call him Dexter. Uh, o D A N I. Odani? Odani. Okay. Um, and we talked about Robotech. And he was really thrilled that I had posted a review on Robotech and he encouraged me to keep doing it. And he was a really strong advocate for the comic book. And it was nice talking with him about it. Um, one of the things he was saying is that, you know, Carl Maquette of Harmony Gold, you know, the original guy who came up with the idea of taking these three separate Japanese animes and kind of splicing them together, that Carl Maquette, you know, it was his ultimate goal to be able to tell a more integrated story. Because, you know, for instance, the Invid, which are the villains in the third season, are really just the villains in Mospita, which is, you know, season three is just this separate anime. And so the original anime creators of Mospita we're not working with the anime creators from across, and so when Robotech, the Invid are kind of alluded to in season one, but we don't really see them until season three. And Carl McCat was like, you know what, if I ever get a chance to really redo the story, he always wanted to do the story and more integrate them so that we could have the Invid not just be the season three villains. And so in the comic book, as Dexter was saying, now we get to see the Invid in the comic book in the Macross slash season one storyline. And that he was really encouraging people to get behind it and support the comic book. And I gotta say, it is it is good artwork. It's good story. I'm gonna take you here through some of issue 19. Uh, I really like it, but for Robotech fans out there, I, I think you need to support this comic book because it's doing, it's following through with Carl McCat's vision of taking these three shows and really kind of mixing them around and telling a more integrated story. So, uh, here we are with issue 19. Uh, if you, in case you missed it, there's a review for issue 18 on a prior video. But in issue 19, we start off with... Dun, dun, dun. Los Angeles has been nuked. <laughs> oh, oh, that's, that's, that's bittersweet for me. I, I spent like 20 years out there and, uh... Ooh. Ah. Uh. I, I, uh, there's, there's some loving and some hating going on in L.A. Uh, but, you know what, there's an... <laughs> I love the idea of the Zentrati sitting back and looking at Earth and going, should we nuke the whole planet? Eh, how about just L.A.? <laughs> Bam! <laughs> so we start off at L.A. just to get clobbered. And, uh, then we, we get this nice reaction here with, uh, the father of Lisa Hayes. Uh, Admiral Hayes, which I don't believe that was in the original show. I believe this this character is is an add-on. Although, if I'm wrong, I mean, tell me about it. Maybe I'm not as solid a Robotech fan as I should be. But I believe that they kind of made some some adjustments there, making making Admiral Hayes uh, Lisa's father. Uh, basically, making Lisa's father the, the person who heads the entire Earth Earth Defense Coalition, and you know. He is this consistent war hawk who always wants to just, like, blah, blow, blow up the Zentradi. And, of course, given that the Zentradi just nuked Los Angeles, he, he certainly has good reason. But they also have this massive armada, which kind of, you know, it's mutually assured destruction. Um, but he wants to fire the Grand Cannon and the, the Earth Defense, you know, United Earth Government. Yeah, the, I think called the UEG. They, they don't want to do that. Um, but he's... he's He's given military orders to say, ignore the civilian orders. If we see them firing up to nuke another city, then we're just going to unleash the Grand Cannon on them. Meanwhile, we get, we get you know, Dolza 
who's wondering where the SDF-1 is, and we get, of course, Lisa Hayes. That miniskirt. I mean, yes, I understand. She, she wore a miniskirt, but she's certainly filling it out now. Uh, <laughs> every time I see her, I was like, well, all right, Captain, what, what are you ordering? I do miss Global, but check this out. In issue 19, Global comes back. So uh, we, we, we got these, these Entrati who are sneaking on board. You know, that, that pretty much is right out of the, uh, the beginning. But I, don't, I love this artwork here. for uh, I, I think that's a really cool panel with, with Admiral Hayes. And then, oh, and we get... I don't know why they changed Max Sterling's name. Now he's Max Percy. That seems a needless change. Like, I'm... Because... You know, I got really attached to the name Sterling, because one, uh, in Robotech Season 2, is supposed to be the daughter of Max Sterling, which is named Dana Sterling. So, that that's an arbitrary change there. I miss the, I miss the Sterling name, but now it's Max Percy. He still kept the blue hair, so we're winning on that one. And, you know, we got the Veritech Squadron, and, you know, who gets Skull 1, which is Roy Foker's old, old Veritech. And that that is passing to to Max. So, and then we, I, I'm still not quite sure. Of course, I'm, I'm picking it up here at issue 18 and now reviewing 19. So I'm still not sure the role of Dr. Zand here. I see that he's, he's cloning people, uh, which the Robotech Masters were doing. So maybe there's some tie-in? Maybe, maybe, could be. But amongst the people that he is cloning includes... Dun, dun, dun. Let's see. Let's see if I can find it for you. Admiral Global, which I'm, I'm glad to see because I, I missed I, I missed Global. Like you know, he was he was the admiral, right? He was the one in charge. So and it's it's different when you know Lisa Hayes was kind of reacting and just kind of following orders. But when Lisa Hayes is in charge, like it totally changes the character. I don't think at any point during during Robotech uh, is Lisa Hayes just like directly in charge of things. So it's it's a totally different dynamic having Global dead and, and Lisa Hayes in charge. But yeah, there's there's a nice panel of Global who's been cloned by Dr. Zand as well as um as well as Roy Foker. So interesting stuff going on. And then with, with Rick's Rick Hunter's eyesight, you know, again, I'm curious to see where the writers are gonna go. They're telling the same story, but they're they're twisting it enough that it becomes interesting. And and given that their whole idea is to integrate, you know, the Macross, Southern Cross, and Mosquito lines into kind of all one mish, I like how they're combining the elements of the cloning of the Robotech Masters, and then the Invid, we we you know, we see the Invid power armor, and there's the threat that the Invid are gonna come, and then that would make kind of a logical conclusion. To, or at least the logical response to uh, the Zentradi having to break off. Because I, I never liked, it was always kind of dumb, I mean, you just kind of forgave it, that the Zentradi were so freaked out by J-pop. <laughs> going back to the original show, that was our secret weapon against the Zentradi. They had this massive armada of spaceships, and we had J-pop, and they just couldn't, couldn't handle it. <laughs> I hope they change that element. But uh, issue 19, I really enjoyed, uh, you know, we, we, we get this nice, uh, you know, the Zentradi are, are coming down and then, and they're, they're blowing stuff up. And then we get the firing of the Grand Cannon, which is pretty spectacular. And then Dolza has to, has, has to retreat. And now it sets up coming, coming into issue 20. And because the SDF-1 is going to arrive and uh, things are looking interesting. So... Uh, Robotech fans, you know, I, I would encourage you to heed the words of, of Dexter O'Donnie and to go out and support the comic book. Um, you know, if you if you really love the original stories, I think this story is going to be better. Because the original story, again, as I said, is Frankensteinian. It was having to follow the material they had, but now in the comic book, they can tell any story they want. So uh, I would encourage you to support that. Meanwhile, by the way, I have a Kickstarter coming up for White Lily uh, issue three. I've had to move that back to May because uh, my inker, unfortunately, Diana hurt herself. So, and I don't launch my Kickstarters until my artwork's all done. But uh, I'm going to come up with a, a finalized launch date, and I will reveal 
uh, the anchor that I'm bringing on board as soon as that gets finalized as well. So uh, there's also a link for that down in the description. So, anyway, take care. Hope you liked the video. If you did, please like it, share it, and subscribe. I'm trying to get up to 100 subscribers. Thank you very much for your time.